Good morning. Last time I had introduced a new technique for solving Laplace's equation and I had gone halfway through a problem. So I will complete that problem right now and then go on and apply it to a very interesting and relevant uh, example where we will see how this problem works out in practice. What we were looking at was the solution of Laplace's equation when you apply it to a two dimensional box. So this direction is x, this direction is y and I had the condition that the potential was equal to 0 at the bottom, 0 at the side, 0 at the other side but it was equal to V naught at the top. Now we had worked out that if we assumed phi of x y was equal to some capital X of x, capital Y of y and wrote out the equations, we get certain solutions. So this is an assumption, there is nothing to say it works. However, if you put it in, what we found was that for solutions that take this form, you get two independent equations. One equation you get is d squared capital X dx squared is equal to minus some k squared capital X, where k is unknown, it is just a constant and you got a second equation which was d squared capital Y dy squared equals plus k squared capital Y. This came out of just uh, substituting this equation into del squared phi equal to 0, namely Laplace's equation. So now if you take this equation and solve it, which we did last time, we get straightforward answers because this is nothing but the pendulum equation and this is nothing but the unstable pendulum equation. So we already know the answers to these and what we worked out was that the potential looks like for, from this equation I get something A cos kx plus B sin kx and from this we get into C e to the kx plus D e to the minus sorry ky. This was the general solution you can get and we still do not know k and we also do not know A, B, C and D. So we have five pieces of information to be fixed but we have the boundary conditions to help us in fixing these. Now if you look at the boundary condition in X, we have that the potential goes to 0 at x equals 0 and the potential goes to 0 at x equals Lx. From that we are able to eliminate cos kx because at x equals 0 cos kx is 1, so it would not go to 0 and by requiring at x equals Lx sin kx goes to 0, we have the condition k times Lx is equal to some n times pi because sin if you plot sin of x versus x we know that sin goes to 0 at 0 goes to 0 at pi 2 pi etc. So if this function goes to 0 at x equals Lx it must be that the argument must go to 0, pi, 2 pi, etc. So k times Lx is equal to n pi where n is some integer. We cannot take k n equals 0 because then we do not have any solution at all, sin of 0 is just 0. So n can be equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. n equals minus 1 is not important because sin of minus x is nothing but minus sin x. So it can be absorbed into the amplitude B. 
Similarly, when we were talking about the y dependence, we could replace this piece by some e times sin hyperbolic of k y, because this can be written as something times cos hyperbolic plus something times sin hyperbolic and cos hyperbolic goes to 1 just like cos goes to 1. So, the solution we have is phi goes like sin n pi over L x x times sin hyperbolic the same quantity n pi over L x y times some unknown coefficient, I call it A. But the problem is this side depends on n, this side does not depend on n. So, what is this n? Which n can we choose? Frankly, we can choose any of them, because they all of them satisfy the boundary conditions. And since Laplace's equation is linear, if I have one solution phi 1 and I have another solution phi 2, both of which satisfy Laplace's equation, then I can take any combination of these and because it is a linear operator, it will give me A del square phi 1 plus B del square phi 2, which is therefore 0. So, any linear combination of solutions is also a solution. So, I am going to use the most general linear combination I can use, which is I am going to sum over all the n's. Now, as you see, I went from having 5 unknowns to having 1 unknown, but now I have gone back to having infinite number of unknowns. So, I have not really progressed at all, I have got more unknowns than I had, but I have used up quite a few of my boundary conditions. Phi equals 0 has been implemented because this is 0, phi equals 0 at x equals 0 has been implemented because of this, phi equals 0 at x equals L x has also been implemented because of this. So, all that remains is the top phi equals v naught. So, let us put in this function and see what it is equal to at the top which is y equals L y. This is y equals 0, x equals 0 and x equals L x. So, at the top we have phi of x L y is equal to, I am going to use the summation, sum n equals 1 to infinity, sum unknown coefficient a n, let me write out the sin hyperbolic, sin hyperbolic n pi over L x times y, but y is equal to L y. So, I can substitute L y there times sin of n pi over L x times x. This is not dependent on x, it is just a number. So, I can call this some c n. So, I can write this so that the form of this equation is clear. Phi at the top is equal to v naught is equal to n equals 1 to infinity summation sum coefficient c n times sin n pi over L x x. You have studied Fourier series in your maths uh, courses and you can immediately see this is nothing but a sin Fourier series. So, we have to solve it. Now, what is how what is the method of solution? Well, the method of solution is simply to recognize that if you look at the sin Fourier series for n equals 1, it is a function like that. For n equals 2, 
the function like this, which means that over this period both are positive, but over this period this is negative and this is positive. And since the integrals are equal, but the sign has changed, the product of these two would have 0 inter uh, integral. More generally you can show, and let us show it, 0 to L x sin of n pi x over L x sin of m pi over L x x dx. Well, sin times sin is a well known formula. You just take the when you have the product of two trigonometric functions, it is nothing but the sum or difference of two trigonometric terms. So, this becomes uh, 1 half integral 0 to Lx cos of n minus m over Lx. I can never remember whether it is m minus n, n minus m, it does not matter, minus cos of n plus m over L x. You can correct any algebra errors here. Now, if m and n are not equal or if n and m are not opposite signs, but in this case we do not have any opposite signs because n must go from 1 to infinity. So, n plus m is always going to be a positive number, n minus m has a chance of being a 0, but it can be 0 only if n is equal to m. For any other case when you do this integral what will you get? 1 half times L x over n minus m times sin n minus m over L x x between 0 and L x minus 1 half L x over n plus m sin n plus m over L x x between 0 and L x. When you substitute 0 of course, both sign terms goes to zero, go to 0. When you substitute L x, x equals L x then it can L x cancels with all of these have a pi. the L x cancels with the denominator. So, you are left with some integer number times pi and you know that sin of any number times pi sin of n pi is always 0. So, this whole thing becomes 0. So, it is equal to 0 if m is not equal to n. If m is equal to n then this term is cos of 0. Cos of 0 is a constant, it is 1. So, the integral of cos of 0 will become L x over 2 if m equals n. Because the factor of 2 comes out, the integral of 1 from 0 to L x is nothing but L x. So, that gives me L x over 2. It is a very powerful statement. It means that if I integrate any sin n pi x over L x multiplied by any other sin m pi L x over L x, the answer is non zero only if m equals n, and if m equals n, then the answer is L x over 2. Let us use that here. I have my equation V naught is equal to sum n equals 1 to infinity C n sin n pi x over L x and I am going to multiply both sides by sin m pi x over L x and integrate. So, I get integral 0 to L x V naught sin m pi over L x x dx must be equal to some n equals 1 to infinity C n integral 0 to L x sin m pi x over L x 
sin n pi x over l x dx. Well, this side we have just worked out. This is equal to sum n equals 1 to infinity C n multiplied by 0 if n not equal to m and L x over 2 if n equals m. So, I am summing over an infinite number of terms, but only one of those terms is not 0, all the rest are 0. So, this becomes C m L x over because only this term matters, all the others are 0. What about the left hand side? Well, the left hand side I can pull the v naught out, integral of sin I know how to do that, it is minus cos, so it is minus v naught times L x over m pi cos of m pi over L x, x between 0 and L x. which can be written out as v naught L x over m pi times the minus 1 will make it 1 minus cos of m pi L x over L x. So, that cancels out. When m is 0, 2, 4 etcetera, this becomes cos of 2 pi, cos of 4 pi, cos of 6 pi, that is nothing but 1. So, this will go to 0. So, this is equal to V naught L x over m pi with a factor of 2 if m odd 0 if m even. So, now let us combine these two statements and get a solution. I will rewrite the equation, so you can see where I am coming from. So, the left hand side which was the integral of v naught sin m pi x over L x has become v naught L x over m pi with a factor of 2. Okay, and I will put if m odd 0 if m even, this is the left hand side is equal to L x over 2 C m. So, what it means is if m is even L x over 2 C m is equal to 0. If m is odd, L x over 2 C m is twice v naught L x over m pi. So, we can solve C m is equal to, well if m is even, C m is 0. If m is odd, the L x cancels out, this factor of 2 goes that side becomes 4 v naught over m pi if m odd. So, my answer becomes since I found C m, I can now write down what the potential is. The potential phi of x y was equal to sum on n equals 1 to infinity C m, well it was not C m, it was A m sin h n pi y over L x sin n pi x over L x. What we have found is C m and what is C m? C m is equal to A m sin hyperbolic uh, n pi over L x times L y. Since I know C m, therefore I know A m and I can substitute in here. And I get the final answer for potential. It exists only if it is odd. So, n odd that is n equals 1, 3, 5, etcetera. 
and it becomes 4 v naught over m n pi times sin hyperbolic n pi y over l x divided by sin hyperbolic n pi l y over l x times sin n pi x over l x. It is a complicated looking expression, but what is important about it is that now we have no nothing in this expression that is left to be determined, everything is known. It is a summation over n, it depends on v naught, it depends on L x, it depends on L y, but it does not any longer depend on free parameters, everything has been pinned down. Now, there are some things that we can immediately learn from this which are very important. Supposing I took this box and tilted it, so my x is this way now or I guess this way and y is this way. So, I have got phi equals 0 here, um, no I am sorry let me correct that. I have just made it a very flat box, I still have my x and y correctly, phi equals 0 here, phi equals v naught here and phi equals 0 at the ends. Now, supposing L x is much much greater than L y, I have drawn it that way. Supposing L x is 1000 times L y, then we can ask what kind of solution comes out of this equation. We know that we should get back to the uh, parallel plate capacitor and supposing on the other hand L x is much much less than L y, we would like to know what happens namely this kind of problem where phi equals 0, phi equals 0, phi equals 0, phi equals zero but phi equals v naught. Now, the particular problem we have solved gives us an answer to the second problem immediately because if you look at the answer, the answer says phi of x y is equal to some summation on n odd, but it depends on sin hyperbolic of n pi y over l y l x sorry divided by sin hyperbolic n pi l y over l x. Now, when you go away from the bottom plate, L y over L x is a very large number and similarly y over L x will be a large number and both of these hyperbolic uh, functions can be approximated, each of them is like an exponential. So, this looks like sum over n odd various other things times e to the power of n pi y over l x minus n pi l y over l x times other things. So, what it tells us is something very important. It says that as you go away from the top plate, the potential v naught, if you drew a plot, let us say this is the base and I am drawing, drawing a plot of potential, the potential will decay exponential. It decays as if you write this out it is e to the power of n pi over l x times l y minus y with a minus sign. So, it is equal to v naught and as you go away it becomes less not slowly it becomes less exponentially fast. Now, the exponential is the fastest varying function we know. I mean functions of exponentials are faster, but of all the common functions we have, this is the one that decays quickly. So, you can see that if you have any kind of field, if you have any kind of voltage at one end of a long pipe, because this is looking like a long pipe, 
that voltage does not penetrate the pipe at all. In fact, it decays on a distance that is of the order of L x. In this case, the decay distance is L x over pi. As soon as L y minus y is of order L x over pi, you have already got e to the minus 1 as the worst case and e to the minus n for in general. So, the function has become quite small and if it is twice this, it is e to the minus 2 and so on and so forth. The same idea can be applied to the parallel plate capacitor, I would not do it here, but you can show that if you look at fringing fields, that is you draw the voltage, uh, you draw the field lines of a parallel plate capacitor, you know that out here the field lines will bulge out. Similarly, on the other side, the question is to what extent does this behavior penetrate into the middle? How far from the edge must we be before we can say it is a ideal capacitor? The answer is again the same. You have this quantity. If this is the height h, then if you move from the end a distance equal to h over pi, you are already in very good shape. A few times h over pi and you can forget about the edge of the capacitor and we treat it as a one dimensional capacitor. In this course, we do not really go further into multi dimensional Poisson's equation. However, I think for your own interest, you should go into it because there are many, many interesting results that come out of doing electrostatics in multiple dimensions. I will do one more problem, however, because that is very important from the point of view of power applications. The particular problem I am going to take up is the following. Supposing I have a blade edge, a knife edge. So, there is some angle, I will call it beta, typically greater than 180 degrees, nearly 360 degrees and there is a long straight edge and I have this charged and I would like to know what are the potentials near this sharp edge. Even more interesting would be a cone. Both of these problems are easily solved. I am going to solve this one and leave this, just give you the answer for this. But in both cases, it turns out that very high fields develop near the sharp edge and making beta nearly 360 degrees makes this a needle and this is nothing but your lightning arrester. And sharp edges again appear quite often in our uh, designs and you have to worry about discharges happening in cracks for example. So, let me look at this particular problem. It is a two dimensional problem because the third dimension nothing is happening. So, I am going to use r and theta, you can see that it is a angle is important here. So, Cartesian coordinates are not good. So, I will assume that I have these two edges, I will assume that there is some angle beta. Now, I am really interested in the case where beta is this, but I will solve the general problem. I will assume that potential is 0 here, potential is 0 here, but far away there is some potential say V naught and I am interested in knowing what is the nature of the potential near here? What is the nature of electric field rather? 
near the point. The answer I will give you immediately as long as this angle is less than 180 degrees, this electric field is vanishing, it becomes very tiny. But the moment you cross 180 degrees and the moment you start having a point there, the electric field becomes infinity. And you need to know how this electric field grows as you come closer to this point. The reason is in any real design, this point is not a true point. So you would actually, if you looked at it very closely, it would be rounded. So there would be a curvature at the tip. It may be 1 micron, it may be 10 microns. So if you knew this general solution and you knew that the electric field went as rho to the power of minus 0 0.3, then you can substitute rho naught and find out the maximum electric field and that is extremely important for breakdown, for discharges and for other kinds of effects. So now let us try and solve this problem. This is r theta coordinates, so I need my cylindrical coordinates Laplace's equation. One over, well, I am going to use rho and theta. And I am going to assume phi is equal to r of rho and psi of theta. I am not very good at writing capital rho and capital theta, so I am choosing different symbols plus uh, times psi plus r over rho squared d squared psi d theta squared and this whole thing is equal to 0, Laplace's equation. Once again, I divide through by r psi and I get an equation that says but I still have this rho here, but I can easily get rid of that by multiplying through by rho square. So I will do that. If I multiply through by rho square, I will get a rho in the numerator. Now this function, this part of the expression is a function of rho only and this part is a function of theta only because you can see that psi is a function of theta, r is a function of rho. So I can equate each of these to a constant, the same argument I have used several times in the last two lectures. So when I do that, I get rho d d rho of rho d capital R d rho is equal to some, well I would not use k. nu squared uh, r and on this side I have uh, d squared psi d theta squared is equal to minus nu squared psi. This is again the pendulum equation, so this implies psi is equal to sin nu theta and cos nu theta. Here this is a rather simple equation even though it does not look simple. The reason is when I differentiate and r has any form, if r looks like uh, rho to the power of alpha, I take the derivative it will become alpha rho to the power of alpha minus 1. But after differentiating I multiply by rho. So it will become alpha rho to the power of alpha, so it becomes alpha capital R because R is rho to the power of alpha. 
So, this operator all it does is it multiplies r by alpha and then this operator again multiplies r by alpha. So, I will get alpha squared r is equal to nu squared r. So, alpha squared is equal to nu squared or the answer is for this equation r of rho is equal to either rho to the power of nu or rho to the power of minus nu. Let me repeat if I guess that r goes like some power of rho say rho to the power of alpha taking the derivative with respect to rho gives me alpha times rho to the power of alpha minus 1, but I then multiply by rho. So, the alpha minus 1 there becomes rho to the power of alpha, but rho to the power of alpha is the original function. So, this whole operation acting on r gives me alpha times r. So, if I operate it twice I will get alpha square times r and the right hand side is some constant nu square times r. So, it must be that whatever power I need to use there is nothing but plus or minus nu. So, those are the two solutions. So, I can now write the answer potential as a function of rho and theta is equal to some a rho to the power of nu plus b rho to the power of minus nu times c cos nu theta plus d sin nu theta, but I do not know what nu is and I do not know what a, b, c and d are. So, once again I have 5 unknowns. Well, I do have boundary conditions. The boundary condition I have is phi of any rho theta equals 0 is equal to 0, phi of any rho theta equals this angle beta it is also equal to 0. At theta equals 0 if phi is 0 it must be that this is 0. So, constant c is gone because cos of 0 is 1, so I cannot have any c. At theta equals beta again if it is 0 I must have d sin of nu beta is equal to 0, but I know that if sin is going to 0 this must be n pi or nu is equal to n pi over beta. So, this is n pi over beta, but I know nu I can substitute nu here also. So, I get an answer pi of rho theta is equal to a rho to the power of n pi over beta plus b rho to the power of minus n pi over beta times sin n pi theta over beta. I have absorbed the factor d into a and b. As usual because I have a new factor n, so I am going to sum over n and I will put a sum subscript n to a and b. So, now I have a general solution for potential. It is a sum over n equals 1 to infinity a n rho to the power of n pi over beta b n rho to the power of minus n pi over beta sin n pi over beta. But this problem that I am trying to solve happens to include the origin. This is theta equals 0 theta equals beta and rho is in this direction. So, rho equals 0 is part of my region and if you look at this function it is rho to the power of minus something that is it looks like 1 over rho to the power of something it is going to go to infinity here. So, I cannot allow this 
because my conditions are potential is 0. So, this piece must go. So, I am left with only one coefficient, but infinite number of them all the a n's are still to be determined. Okay, I have got phi, now I need electric field. To determine this a n, I will now have to solve the problem of what is the potential on the wall, on the far wall, but that is not what I am interested in. So, I will just leave it this way. If I knew that potential, I can solve this a n also, but now I am more interested in something else. From this potential, I would like to calculate the electric field. So, I can calculate E r or E rho is equal to minus del phi del rho and E theta equals minus 1 over rho del phi del theta. Now, if you take the derivative with respect to rho, I am going to act on rho to the power of n pi over beta. So, what I will get? is something that will go like rho to the power of n pi over beta minus 1 times other things. If, if I take E theta, the derivative with respect to theta will act on this term, but the, there is a 1 over rho. So, it also goes like rho to the power of n pi over beta minus 1. So, if I write down the answer, What I get is that E rho of rho theta is going to be equal to sum n equals 1 to infinity a n, I still do not know what a n is, rho to the power of n pi over beta minus 1 times sin n pi theta over beta and E theta as a function of rho and theta is again sum n equals 1 to infinity, I have to multiply by n pi over theta. It is going to be equal to a n rho to the power of n pi over beta minus 1 cos n pi theta over beta times n pi over beta. So, these are the solutions. And what is important about them is this minus 1. Now, when you look at the electric field and you sketch it for each of these ends, what will I get? Supposing I take beta equals pi over 2. So, n pi over pi over 2, so it is 2 n minus 1. So, the variations are 2 n minus 1. So, for n equals 1, the electric fields will grow linearly. For n equals 2, the electric field will grow like a cubic. For n equals 3, the electric field will grow like a fifth order and so on and so forth. So, the electric field clearly goes to 0 at rho equals 0. So, this is a very controlled case. Now, the, the fact that it is blowing up as you go for further away does not matter because we have got to still decide what the values of a n are and the values of a n will be suitably small, so that these terms do not become very large. But now, what happens if we try the same analysis, but we put beta equals pi. If we put beta equals pi, then the pi will cancel out, you will get rho of n minus 1. So, for n equals 1, it is a constant. For n equals 2, it is linear. For n equals 3, it is a quadratic. For n equals 4, it is a cubic, etcetera. 
So now for the first time you get a non-zero potential a non-zero electric field at the point. Now does that make sense? Well think of it. Let us say we have a plate of this type. Now if we let the plate open up completely then we are talking about a semicircle and we have phi equals 0 here and phi equals let us say V naught here. Obviously you will have electric field coming at the plate which means the electric field at this point is no longer 0. So that is what this piece is saying. It is saying there is in fact a uniform piece in the electric field. The electric field does not change with rho as far as this component is concerned. All the other components will correct the edge effects. Now what happens when beta becomes larger than pi? It is the same picture but I will redraw it. I will try beta equals 3 pi by 2, okay. So, this is rho. If I substitute beta equals 3 pi by 2, the pi cancels out and I get 2 thirds n minus 1. So, n equals 1, 2 thirds minus 1 is minus 1 thirds. So, I will get a curve that looks like this. For n equals 2, it is 4 thirds minus 1. So, that becomes 1 third. This is n equals 2. Then there will be 6 thirds minus 1, which is n equals 1. Now, I do not know whether it will, how it will go, but it is linear. And then after that, you get curves that become flatter and flatter near origin. This is the one that is crucial. This curve actually does not remain bounded as rho goes to 0, it blows up. It means that if you had a region like this from this point or to this point you will have large number of electric field lines. So, the, the field lines here there is a large number of field lines landing up at that point which means the closer you come the higher the electric field and the electric field becomes infinite. For beta equals 3, uh, three, 3 pi by 2, this singularity goes like rho to the power of minus 1 thirds. Now, the worst case that you can have is beta equals 2 pi, which is the interesting case because we are interested in a knife edge. If you put a knife edge and you put a electrode near that knife edge, then what kind of electric field will this knife edge see? So, we substitute beta equals 2 pi, we get n over 2 minus 1. And if you put n over 2 minus 1, the first term will go down, this is rho to the power of minus 1 half and corresponds to n equals 1. The second term will be 0, so it is constant rho to the power of 0 which is n equals 2, third term will be rho to the power of half which is n equals 3 and after that you will have a straight line solution which is rho n equals 4 and so on and so forth. This uh, electric field blows up very strongly, it blows up as rho to the power of minus half. And this is why if you have a knife edge near an electrode, a discharge happens almost spontaneously. It is because the electric fields at this point are extremely strong. 
there all the lines of force are landing up on that edge and so the electric field is singular but in fact it is singular for any angle greater than 180 degrees but the amount the singularity changes and this is where it's important to know that a real knife edge is not a true knife edge at all you will have to machine it you will have to machine it so that it can take the heat any time there is a discharge there will be heat produced so that that knife edge cannot truly be a point it will have some si uh, some uh, radius at the top and if that radius is rho naught say 1 micron then you know that the electric field maximum electric field will go like rho naught to the power of minus half or 1 over square root of rho naught it is a large uh, rho naught is 10 to the minus 6 meters this will be 1000 into uh, normalization factors so it is going to be a large electric field but the extent to which it is a large electric field depends very strongly on how how fine a point you can make now all of this was for a knife edge which is very important but even more important is the cone because for example if you have a lightning arrester lightning arrester is nothing but a cone with beta equals 2 pi it's basically a straight line a needle now if you do the same analysis you can in fact solve it's just as easy to solve you will get that the potential the electric field goes like rho to the power of minus 1 this goes like 1 over square root of rho this will go like 1 over rho naught itself so if that needle has uh, at its tip it ends in a ball whose radius is 1 micron you are going to have 10 to the 6 times the normalization of your electric field at that tip so if typically you are having 1 volt you will have a million volts there per meter whereas here you will have a thousand volts per meter so that is why these uh, these kinds of designs are very important the electric field here is a million times or so stronger than it will be anywhere else so any time a lightning happens the breakdown happens here first and since it happens here first the lightning strikes the tip before it strikes any other point and if you connect a good conductor to earth well the lightning keeps striking there and carries away the current safely now this is all I plan to say about uh, electrostatics I was planning to do one or two other problems but I think uh, the course time is limited so I will stop with this material but I will say that electrostatics pretty much is a capsule of electromagnetics all the techniques we use in other parts of electromagnetics are used in electrostatics as well a variation of Poisson's equation is what you do in magnetics as well and the wave equation uses many techniques separation of variables all those techniques that we have used here so if you are comfortable with electrostatics there is only one more concept that you have to learn before you can master the whole subject and that is basically the cross product and the curl if you can understand how you add one more vector operator besides the divergence we have the whole field is covered there are some minor additional problems that we could have done for example I wanted to do the uh, problem of uh, a solar of a capacitor attracting a dielectric or repelling a dielectric I will do that problem in connection with a solenoid and a ferrite it's the same problem whether it's in electrostatics or in magnetostatics and uh, the problem of use solving dielectric problems with uh, Laplace's equation is fairly straightforward so there's nothing additional to do but the problem of doing Poisson's equation would require a little more effort do read your textbook and uh, see if it makes sense to you because the mechanics of the problem solving is the same we have already done more or less all we had to do to solve 
Laplace's equation, the same things we do to solve Poisson's equation. But it's always would have been better if I had worked out a problem. As it is, uh, I will close the chapter on electrostatics here, and next lecture onwards, I will be looking at magnetostatics. Thank you. Thank you.